Welcome back, this is video number two. If you've made it this far, I'm glad you haven't run screaming from the room having seen your first analytic functions. Now let's talk about some of the ranking options you might be able to see, not just the ones we saw in the first video. Enjoy. These are two minute sessions really designed to help you solve real problems rather than just being a syntax guide. In this session, we're gonna look at some of the options for ranking data with analytics. Let's do a 10 second recap of the previous session. We were given the requirement, I need the sequence in which everyone joined the company, obviously as soon as possible. So this was our analytic function template. What we did was we knew we had to do a ranking function. We weren't gonna carve the data up, so we didn't need the petition clause. We needed to rank it by the order in which they were hired. And we didn't need a windowing clause because we weren't looking across any boundaries of rows. So we used our function and very quickly came up with a lovely solution to give the higher hiring sequence. Let's look at some of the different ranking schemes we can now use. Now, at most sporting events, we often have a medal presentation at the end. But the question is, what happens when the results aren't as obvious as what you can see here? What happens if there's, say, a tie for second place? Well, in most sporting events, what happens is we don't end up presenting a third place finisher. The person that comes after the tie for second is given fourth place. So that's what we had. We didn't end up having a third place finisher at all. It's the same with our ranking function. When ties occur, what the ranking function does is skips a value. So if we have some ranking functions here and we have first, second, and then two values for a tie, then the next value in our ranking function will be five. We simply never get the example of four placed in our ranking results. Now, if we want to get that four back, we can use the dense rank function. That's our first new function for today. In that case, after a tie, the numbering picks up at the very next number. Let's look at an example. This time, rather than the hiring sequence, we're gonna look at people in terms of the order of their salary. So you can see we've got the data here presented in order of salary from lowest to highest. We've got some ties. We've got Ward and Martin both get the same salary of 1,250 and Scott and Ford also have the same salary of 3,000. Let's look and see what rank and dense rank do and how they look differently. So here's our two functions. We rank and dense rank. This time we're ordering by salary. That's our definition for ranking. We don't need partitioning or window clauses again. Here's our results. You can see that both for rank and dense rank, they both got given the equal ranking value of four for Ward and Martin but it's where the numbers pick up afterwards. You can see that for ranking, we skipped ahead to six, and for dense rank, we jumped just one to five. Once we get to the bottom of the table, you can see the impact that has. A rank will end up with a high rank of the number of rows in your result set, whereas dense rank may be less. Or you might just want a contiguous sequence of rows, of, of rankings. Now for that, that's our next new function for the day. That's called the row number function. You can see there, it doesn't rate ties. It simply always goes up by one. Let's look at that as an example. Here's our same data again with the two ties in there. Now we use the row number function. Once again, we didn't need partition. We didn't need windowing clauses. We're just ordering by salary. Now you can see the salary row number column we've just created has the numbers four and five and 12 and 13 respectively, even though those values are a tie for the salary. So the obvious question is, who gets precedence? Why did Ward get a row number of four and Martin get a row number of five, for example? Well, it's indeterminate, right? There is no rule that says who will get four and who will get five. You can't just make an assumption that that will always be the case. What that means is for the row number function, you must always provide sufficient information that ties will be handled via some other column. In this case, I'm ordering by the employee number column, which is a primary key, that guarantees that my result will be consistent because that will always sort down to a unique row. So let's recap what we've learned today. We already looked at the ranking function and how it skips over for a tie. If we don't want to skip a number for the tie, we can use a dense rank. And if we're just looking for a contiguous sequence of numbers, then we can use row number, but we have to be careful in terms of making sure our results are consistent. You can run these for yourself using the live SQL link below. In the next session, we'll look at more functions for ranking data. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to keep it simple with SQL.